Okay, it just happens to be uh, Saturday afternoon, May the 10th, 2014. It is Mother's Day weekend because tomorrow's Mother's Day. Or as Lou Albano used to say, Mutter's Day. M U T R, Mutter. Hold on for a second. Actually, we just set a new uh, precedence here. This, well, this is the first time that I ever used the levity bells at the very beginning of our show. Mutter. Ain't that a kick in the head? Mutter's Day. M U T R. Mutter. <laughs> uh, I thought that was. I thought that was when it rained at the Kentucky Derby. Mutter's Day. As opposed to fodder. Yeah. Oh, that's what you feed the livestock. Feed the livestock. Fodder. I bet a lot of mutters would like to feed the fodder to the livestock. Anyway, welcome everyone and welcome to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I am your host, James P. Madonna <coughs> of Mega Life 21. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's Mother's Day uh, weekend. 2014 not to be confused with the other years uh, so take care of your mother you only got one mother yeah get those flowers that are gonna die in three days oh no I'm not saying this to support the florist industry the big rip-off greeting card the hallmarks and the, the flowers I get realistic artificial flowers made of fire plant what are nylon or uh, lycra they look like hey I got some fake orchids the other day they looked exactly like real orchids they were pretty from the dollar store no less from the dollar store Dollar Tree uh, a nice plant you can take it of the plant for years if the, you know? if the recipient of the plant does a little research and learns how to properly care for the plant that's it, what I used to do. It will live, just like a pet. That's you, what I used to do on Valentine's Day for one of my... Exes. Actually, I'm glad you mentioned, yeah. I'm glad you mentioned this. No. Uh, the uh, the store Aldi's, which uh, it might be a European Aldi's, company. Aldi's, it's a German. German company. German, yes, German. They, they, built, they opened one up in our town. They have a live Phalaenopsis orchid plants normally selling for over twenty dollars in other stores at all these ten dollars each half price beautiful phalaenopsis very undemanding orchid uh, it can live in medium light if you don't have bright light how do they have time how do they have space to be selling flowers when they're supposed to be selling meat and they're supposed to be selling veggies well they do have lots of food but they have a little section where they have their uh, seasonal Items, you know, stuff that comes in in the spring, something, you know, season. Yeah, like Pat Mugger Shop, right? Yeah. As you're going out the door. Like I picked up uh, an item. Uh, an, I picked up uh, um, a particular exercise equipment that's normally sold for much more money elsewhere, and they had it on clearance at all these. It's called a wobble board, and I and and it was only two left, and they said that's it. That's we're not getting any more, and it was marked down to twelve ninety nine. So I grabbed one. I, I did a video of it. I put it on my uh, my health, my uh, fitness and exercise group on Facebook, and lo and behold, no one, and I repeat, no one, has clicked like or commented on my wobble board uh, video. Suddenly, I have an itch in the middle of my forehead. Ah, uh, that felt good. Who the hell are you, Pat Robertson? Yeah. Huh? I, I, I was shocked. I, I almost thought it was like a Photoshop. Like, how would such a famous man of the cloth, a, a pastor, a minister, an evangelist, give the middle finger to someone publicly and pose for a photograph? Doing so. Doing so. All right. Anyway, let me uh, uh, formally introduce, like I do every week, and. Uh, let me pipe aboard with my authentic bosun's whistle, my illustrious co-host and mentor, and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the, the 
Pope of the Internet. Let me pipe him aboard with the bosun's whistle. Arr, welcome aboard our uncensored, hard-hitting truth starship newsletter censored, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Good this week. Good. Very good. It, it is, uh, it, it, we're having uh, summer temperatures. 77. Uh, Huh? 77 right now, I believe. Sunset Strip. Uh, yeah, we're going to be... Route 66. We're going to be flirting with uh, 80 degrees for a few days. And, uh, you know, it's, it's unseasonably warm. Mm -hmm. So I think we were borderline. Should we go all natural with the, with the hatch open? Or should we go with the air conditioning? And that's mm -hmm. up to the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenberg. So I, th I guess it was borderline. Nah, we wait till the 80s for air conditioning. At least break 80. 80, 80 or 80 plus, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, now, what I want to talk about is, <clears throat> first let me get a sip of my antioxidant rich tea. Antioxidants and uncle oxidants. Remember, I'm, I'm, I'm drinking Earl Grey at this particular time. The Earl of Grey. Yes, I have now, uh, three days of Earl Grey. This is uh, green tea, uh, two bags of aronia berry tea, two bags of uh, a, a tart black cherry tea. Um, yeah, I think I got about, yeah, two bags of green. I said that. Two bags of um, stinging nettles tea. That's about it, really. Yeah. I just, and, I just learned the other day that one cup of green tea has a thousand milligrams of bioflavonoids. I wasn't aware of that. One cup. That much? Yeah. I didn't know it was that rich. Neither, neither did I. I was reading about grapefruits being antiviral and antibacterial uh, properties in grapefruit. I, I know the white part of the rind is loaded with bioflavonoids. Uh, nobody eats that. It's really not. That's the pith. That's that's bitter. No, it's not bitter. The the white part of the uh, rind. Yeah. No, it's not bitter. Are you trying to get this grapefruit, man? It's all bitter. Well, you're like a baby. You you you're 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 very finicky and, about everything. And there are properties. Hey, Steve. In, there are properties in grapefruit that interfere with a lot of medications and stuff for some reason. Well, it's not my problem. I'm talking well, about. I'm talking saying. about. Optimum health through nutrition. Prevention through nutrition. Speaking of optimum health and off the uh, off the grid. Yes. Uh, they they were uh, one of these uh, one of the cable stations was just running because they're raising money. Uh, they were running the uh, documentary on Bob Ross, the painter, the happy painter. Uh. And the Afro painter. I finally came to know what he died of. Lymphoma. Really? Lymphoma. Now, you know, I wonder did possibly the chemicals that he was exposed to in the paints and etc. over the years or what would cause lymphoma, you know? Well, the causes of uh, cancer, uh, it's not just one aspect, it's not no, just one no, thing, no, no. But, it's but it's usually it stress on the body, either f f uh, a chemical stress of toxins in the body, not being able to detoxify properly. And a repeated yeah. exposure. Exposure, repeated exposure yeah. without sufficient detox. Yeah, in between. In between. Mm -hmm and uh, just cumulative stresses uh, which we because have. Because he was such a gentle man and he animals, he loved the animals and etc. He was married, had, had uh, kids and etc. So, et so, so his life... His, his mental state was probably that of a very positive yes, individual. Yes, 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 yes. So there has to be a, 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 a physical or physiological reason why he got lymphoma. In this case, it might very well be an ingredient in, in, I don't know, what do you use with oil paints? 
paint thinner? Well, they used to use turpentine in the old days, but now they use some kind of clear cleaning solution to clean the brushes. That is but it? it, it's the vapors. That's what I was going to say. That I'm, I'm wondering about. The vapors. Yeah. yeah. Well, he was a very unique man. I mean, he banged out a painting in a half hour or 20 minutes. In 31 years. Actually, not counting commercials. So what is it, 20 No minutes? commercials on that. All right, so 30 minutes. 22 sir. minutes. 22 minutes. Okay. But he was on for 31 years. He was on for 31 years, but he was obsessed with northern-based paintings, mountains, pine trees, and lakes. Well, what the hell else do you have in a landscape? I mean, there are, what there are, do you there have? are other parts of the world, like the Red Rock. Well, other parts of the world, but they're all mountains, lakes, no, they're not. trees, you have rocks, the, the red, water. You have the Red Rocks of Arizona. You have the tropics. Yeah. You have a tropical South Pacific islands with a volcano is, in the middle. What I'm saying is landscapes are pretty simple as far as the elements that are involved in Then there are seascapes. Seascapes which, too. Which Ian Grinier that I... Seascapes? Uh, water! That's it. Water and but, sky. But it's, it's what's in it. And you have the detail of the waves crashing, the curling of the waves. just like the way Ian paints. Yes, okay. Excellent, I mean, outstanding seascapes. Bob Ross was always the same thing. Lakes, pine trees, snow-capped mountains, yes. and a sky above it. That's it. Well, you know, he used but to... He, but he made money, and, he, and he, he, was, he, he had fame and fortune. He, you know, he was in Indiana, and uh, he moved to Alaska, and was there for had. many years. That's what he had. So, you know, the snow-covered mountains. Okay. That's it for Bob Ross, you know. But I, we are, we are I, I'm very sorry that when anybody of a greatness and talent prematurely dies when they do not have to. Yes. And that goes with everybody, you know. Just like a, a mind is a terrible thing to waste, a talent is a terrible thing to waste, especially when you have a system that is totally rigged where if you don't have a sponsor, if you don't have the money to back you up, your genius talent goes nowhere. Thank you. Real Watch the Shark Tank. Real fair, capitalism. Yeah. Real fair. Yeah. Yeah, real Watch fair. Watch the Shark Tank. And you gotta, and you gotta depend on, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, fundraising and scholarships. It shouldn't yeah. be that way. It J.P. Moore. It should be. Uh, Westinghouse. It should be yeah. like the banners I posted about Denmark, where if you got, if you're alive and you have desire and ability, the government is behind you. Oh, they pay too much in taxes. Oh, really? They get a lot for their taxes. Everybody. No they one don't is. Get crap. No one is denied a complete. Good education or health care. That's correct. You don't have to. Uh, you, see, uh, you don't have to spend your whole life paying off a student loan. One year absence from the workplace when you have a baby. One year. Wow. One year. Wow. And, the, and a father has maybe like six weeks or so. Paternity. And they Paternity. have six weeks vacation. And you know what? Normally. And guess what? The best part to me is. The rich pay their taxes and most likely pay for most of it. That screw the rich. I have no sympathy for them, especially wicked, uh, obsessively greedy rich like the Koch brothers <laughs> and uh, 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 Bill Gates, who uh, claims he wants to help the world, but meanwhile he owns 500,000 shares of Monsanto stock. Uh, he's helping the world, all right. He's helping the world. He's helping his world, the world of Bill Gates. <laughs> he just did. Well, the, no, the disclaimer doesn't say the world as in us, you know. Yeah. Now, some uh, um, um, gentleman uh, sounds like he—he's a teabagger. He's from the state of Mississippi, which is part of the Bible Belt. Mississippi. Yes. Uh, he posted some um, banners, which uh, kind of go like this. You know, you have a. Uh, image of an American bald eagle staring at you, which means they always use patriotism in a lot of things they do. Or, or, Their idea of patriotism. Or, 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 the, or, or the Bible. Their idea, Their of, idea of the Bible. Of the Bible. Yeah. 
And it said something like this. Uh, 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 economic, what is it? Economic formula. Economics is really easy to understand. Mm -hmm. You, you go to work, uh -huh. you earn the money, yeah. you get paid. That's economics. I know what he was getting at by saying that. Well, but, that's not economics. That's not God's economics. And you know what I wrote underneath? I says, well, uh, uh, the rich start paying their fair share in income taxes. That's part of the economic plan, too. Yeah. Not just uh, everybody works. You want to eat, you got to work. You want to do this, you got to work. Got to work, got to work, got to work. They're always blaming the little guy, and they're always blaming social services. But they never mention the rich not paying taxes. One, one out of every four corporations, according to Bernie Sanders, one out of every four American corporations pays pay zero, I repeat, zero, zero. in federal income nah. taxes. The, the center of a bagel, according to, 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 to Mr. Sanders, who deserves a salute from uh, my lucky shillelagh. But uh, uh, other than the tax problem involved in that thing, don't people see that there's something wrong with a system where you have to depend on someone for your survival that is providing you with a job? Absolutely. Don't people see there's something wrong with that? that I mean, how far removed is that from slavery? That your very existence, you know, relies on an employer giving you whatever little chump change that he gives you. I mean, somebody was uh, uh, posted information about Walmart and uh, they were mentioning all the little, these little sneaky loophole ways that Walmart chisels their way mm -hmm. into uh, greater prosperity. Mm -hmm. And uh, meanwhile, the Walmart employee is treated like garbage and is paid shit. And, and the fat cats running Walmart are getting richer and richer and richer. Mm -hmm. And how they get away with so many mm -hmm. shenanigans. Wouldn't it be taxes. something? Wouldn't it be something? If uh, the uh, employees of a Walmart, wherever it may be, were in the were able uh, economically, uh, financially secure enough to boycott the company, Walmart. so that it either either went bankrupt or moved the hell out. Walmart is very tricky, crafty, and sneaky. They make sure they under undercut their competition so much yeah. that if another store has the same item for a for a lower price, you bring in the uh, the flyer, the circular, and they will match it. So they they I don't want to say extortion, but they force people that are living on a strict budget to shop at Walmart. Yes. And if and if you're in a rural and they force the mom and poppers out of business. So there's nothing left but Walmart. And if you live in the boonies Walmart. and you were looking for a job, Walmart. what job is available? Walmart. Walmart. And then you have to go on social services if you work for Walmart. Walmart. And it's a it's like a revolving door. It's a, a vicious cycle. And then the people who own Walmart want to cut the social services. <laughs> they they want to... It's like they want slaves. Come on. That's what they want. Well, look at the look, what is it? Forty-one senators voted down voted down the minimum wage. Period. When when I say period, I mean that that chump change they call ten dollars and ten cents an hour. Voted it down, but but they also posted what they make per hour, congressmen and senators. The uh -huh. breakdown. Did that change anything? And what about the cost of living increase they got? Did that change anything? No, because no. the stupid Americans keep on... You know you know what this reminds me of, Dr. Bill? What Albert Einstein once said, that the definition of insanity is when you do the same thing over and over and again... And expect a different result. And expect a different result. This is the American voter. Mm. This is the mind of the teabagger. They, they bitch and moan and cry about their standard of living and what's going on with them and how much they hate 
government because they, 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 they're, they're brainwashed by like Fox News to blame everything on the government and Barack mm -hmm. Obama. They never talk about how corporate CEOs are, are the real blame. And they bitch and moan, and what do they do? They, they re-elect the same corrupt people, conservatives, in office, just like they did in New Jersey, a traditional blue state, a traditional democratic state, re-elects Chris Christie. Meanwhile, Barbara Bono kicked his ass in the two debates that she had with him, but oh no, Democrats in New Jersey, traitors, turned their back traitors. on Barbara Bono and the party and the little guy and supported Chris Christie. Yes. Now, if you, talk about the dumbing down of America. This is the dumbing down of America. And, and this is insanity because you're expecting a different result by doing the same thing over and over again. And you, you know, a part of that whole thing, and I, it, it just struck me the other day, Republican conservatives, they have a bad habit when any one of them is proved to be corrupt, immoral, whatever, they let them get away with it. There is no punishment. There's no, there's no remorse. There's nothing. They reward them with big jobs at Fox News. Yeah, and this is a problem. And they created the diversion by, by putting something else on the news, something something frivolous. They talk about for days. It could Benghazi. be anything. Benghazi. Benghazi, the guy in Florida who wants to marry his laptop computer. Uh, hey, anything. That's the movie Her. <laughs> <laughs> anything, anything to distract you from what the Republican Congress and the Republican Party is up to, and the Koch brothers. Uh, Jesse Ventura says, you know how many Americans never heard of the Koch brothers? They never heard of Alec for 30 years yeah. while it was working behind the scenes. You know? No, not at all. And uh, of course we don't have to tell you about the shenanigans of the Koch brothers. You know, they all want the same thing. They, they, they don't want to help the little guy at all. That includes social services, Social Security, which is not a social service, uh, Medicare, everything, everything, health care for the poor. They want you to be destitute, in the gutter, desperate, so you, Except American mainstream or poor slob, becomes a slave. Yes. What do you call a drone? What do you call them? A cog in the. A cog in the a wheel of industry. In the wheel of industry. Yeah. And, uh, and you're desperate, so you have no other option to right. be, than to be a slave to people like the And Koch I brothers. thought freedom was all about options. Oh, I thought it was about options. I thought it was, yeah, freedom yeah. is about options. That's right. <laughs> when you think about it, That's I mean, right. most of your... Uh, so if you ain't got options, what kind of freedom do you have? You have none. Exactly. You have the the uh, the union of a government with the corporation. Fascism. Or, or also organized religion, like Jesse Ventura says, organized religion, telling government what they should do and what they can't do. That's a form of fascism, right? Well, fascism. Let's let's be accurate about the term. Merely is marriage between the corporation yeah. and the government. Anything else, you yeah. know, well, go along with that, and totalitarianism, and whatever, you know, comes from it. Well, but. like, if the Congress is voting on something ridiculous, like forcing religion in public school books, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Or, 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 um, or uh, all the, all the, um, the, the, uh, the pro-life propaganda that's mm -hmm. out there, and the, uh, and the uh, creationists versus evolution. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're forcing unproven uh, the um, um, theories, th theories, uh, uh, theories. Uh, I ideologies, ideologies, um, that is anathema to the First Amendment. Like fascism, because you're having you're having an unproven religion dictate. That's that's uh, di dictatorship, totalitarian, influencing politics. Uh, fascism again, marriage between the government and the corporations. Right. That is fascism. Has nothing to do with dictatorship. 
totalitarianism, although it can be sure. like it was under Mussolini. But the actual definition is just marriage between the corporation and the government. Oh, uh, one of the, uh, um, what was I going to say? Oh, I just remembered, Chisler's Hall of Shame. Now, now you stop me if you think it's in my mind or, or if you think I have my hunch is most likely accurate. You, you, you could do that. I won't get upset. Uh, we have a program for the poor. Uh, I, I'm not sure if every state has it, but we have it in New Jersey. Uh, it gives people that ha ha get receive social services an opportunity to have a cell phone. Uh, here you have Assurance Wireless, uh, which is works with the state, and you get a free cell phone. You know, a, a modest cell phone, not a smartphone, but a workable, brand new, decent, basic cell phone. Not a Nokia. Nokia. Not a Nokia from no. from. You, uh, not a Samsung Denmark, Galaxy, I believe. Not a BlackBerry. Not a Samsung Galaxy, but oh. a, a, a good modern. Basic cell phone. Basic cell phone. Yeah. Now, most likely for emergency calls. That's correct. Because they only give you a lousy 250, 250 free minutes, minutes per I month. Now they have added texts. I'm not sure. The, you get a certain amount, amount of, of texts. I don't know if it's unlimited texting. No, I think it's like 250, something like that. It's 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 chicken scratch. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now this per the person that I interviewed said to me, ever since I. I got the Assurance Wireless phone. <laughs> um, I have been getting bombarded, he told me. I bombarded with voicemail calls that do not even apply to me, like a uh, uh, school system uh, uh, schedule, uh, what days they're closed, what days they're open, and he doesn't even have children. Like all uh, soliciting, uh, uh, solicitors leaving uh, voicemail messages, and the reason why I'm bringing this up is that when you listen, if you choose to listen to your voicemails with the Assurance Wireless, guess what? It comes off of your 250 mm -hmm. free minutes. So if, if all these voicemails are accumulating and you're getting bombarded with these voicemails that mean nothing to you, and you choose to listen to one or more or all of them, yeah. guess what? You can kiss your 250 Three minutes goodbye, quick. Mm -hmm. So Chisler's Hall of Shame. I induct. Uh, well, the, the the phone the phone system is Virgin Mobile. The uh, the program is Assurance Wireless. So the both of them, I'm induct inducting. Maybe even the state of New Jersey. Who knows? Into the Chisler's Hall of Shame. Shame on you for being sneaky concerning this situation where people have to pay to listen to their voicemail messages messages that do not even apply to them at all check out uh, the do not call uh, thing see if see if they're still taking calls yeah, to but, but this person that. is receiving different phone numbers on the voicemail from different solicitors including bullshit that Dismiss are not that are not even soliciting dismiss them in other words, if you don't recognize the number, dismiss don't it. just click, uh, hit the dismiss button. That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Now, let us sink our teeth into these readings. We do not have a Venting Vinnie Blake uh, video uh, to, for this show this week because Venting Vinnie Blake did not send me one. But nice. We, nice. But I, nice. But I am meeting with William H. Morrow III uh, after... Dr. Bill takes his lunch break. I do, I am meeting with him. Uh -huh. Our voiceover artist. Uh -huh. We continue to be told the fantasy that free trade is good for the middle class. Oh really? Something is good for the middle class? The truth is that free trade has resulted in loss of jobs, and corporate tax receipts and a decrease in the United States living standards. Is this what they call NAFTA? That's correct. Companies moved physical 
and intellectual production to the third world, the countries, yeah. where wages are low and regulations are non-existent and not enforced. Which means they can have uh, child slave labor if they want it. It means they can lock the doors, and they can have fire escapes, and etc., etc. And, and they can make you wear adult diapers, yes. so, you, so you don't take a bathroom break? Yes. Like they, they, they mistreat the poor Chinese people? Yes. As jobs shifted overseas, the middle class began a downward spiral. Many people who lost their jobs now depend on government assistance. Which, Mr. Paul Ryan, would like to cut more? He doesn't care whether, you know, people need government assistance or not. He doesn't care because it has nothing to do with him and his family. He's a very selfish individual. Free trade also reduced investment in the United States. In the 1950s, companies paid United States taxes that amounted to 30% of their profits. Today, only 9% of corporate profits are paid as taxes to the United States. Treasure. Companies manage tax avoidance by shifting profits to low tax countries. There is little connection between the country where economic activity takes place and the country where the profits are booked. Tax avoidance provided the funds to build facilities in the third world countries. Billions of dollars are now invested overseas by American companies. Federal tax receipts are half of that needed to run our government. Half. Half. Thank you. Who's making up that half? The little schmuck. The little schmuck. We borrow a trillion dollars each year to make up the difference. Continuous borrowing is irresponsible and will lead to an inevitable default due to our overwhelming financial obligations. To increase jobs, end unsustainable borrowing, and secure the future for all Americans, taxes must be increased. Yeah, on the fat cats. A 10% sales tax on all imported products and all items that contain any imported components without exceptions must be imposed. Without this import tax, the middle class will continue to suffer and the United States will sink into economic Absolutely. Absolutely. Also, another tax which we should be implementing is the tax, the tiny Tobin tax, on stocks that are bought and sold. Capital gains? Capital gains is after. I'm talking about when you buy it. Mm -hmm. When you buy a stock. You pay a tax on buying it. We do when we go to the grocery store. We pay sales tax. Sales tax. Thank you. And in New Jersey, it's seven percent. My God, can't we have something like a half percent on the uh, uh, stock market the uh, purchases? A lousy half a percent. Well. Um, I noticed. Um, I know Jesse Ventura likes it, but I noticed the uh, the libertarians tend to like the consumption tax only and to do away with but the that's IRS. That's tax on us again. Yeah, that's what that's what Ed, the late great Ed Koch, Eddie Koch said. Uh, if you go with a consumption tax, I even think somebody sold Gary Null on that idea. Ah! 
I'll get it. If you go with a consumption tax, the since the true consumer is not the wealthy, All right? The little guy pays again. Still pays the tax burden. Mm -hmm. So uh, I mean, uh, I, I mean, I don't know if uh, when, when Jesse Ventura was discussing the Coke brothers. Jesse Ventura does not know at all. Did you see that with the show he did about the Coke brothers? Yes. Because he kept on saying, "Hey, well, that's the American way. The Koch brothers want to increase their profit. I, I don't blame them. I don't. I don't know if he was being sarcastic. They do not wish to improve their profits. That is not what they're doing. See, I didn't know if he. They was, are rigging the political system. The system is rigged against us. But that's I, correct. I, but I don't know if he was being sarcastic in the show. Or, I think he was. I think he was. Because he said I'm it with sure a smile, he right? Huh? Because I'm sure he understands what they're doing. Which has nothing to do with improving yeah, their the profits. Green, the green, that will happen, though. Yeah, As to what they're doing, they just, their profits will increase. They're, yes. They're, yeah, ill-gotten gains. That's their motive. That's not their motive. Ill-gotten gains, man. Ill-gotten yeah. gains. Exactly. They're just greedy demons, That's obsessed. Good. That's it. That's good. Because they can be. Because they're allowed. Because the we the people do not hold our uh, uh, elected leaders feet to the fire we don't we don't do that and, and we continue to vote within the two-party system and we keep allowing the uh, uh, cognitive dissonant uh, Antonin Scalia to make stupid decisions oh you mean the mr. toad uh, toadhead toad face mm. the jet with the, the jowl with the jowls mr. jowl the bloated toad. He's the new bloated toad. The old bloated toad was uh, Jerry Falwell, the late Jerry Falwell. Well, he, this guy is the new bloated toad, Antonin Scalia. Um, yeah, so I, I was going to say something else, but it slipped my mind. Um, well, take the oil off your mind. You know, uh, it's too slippery. Uh, too much viscosity? Uh huh. Yeah, we, we, the people uh, keep on re-electing these individuals, two-party system crooks. And, oh, guess what? I, I didn't know that Ross Perot tried to make a comeback and they wouldn't allow him to, to, to be part of the debates. Yes, He was correct. not invited to the debates. That's correct. So this is a point just... Because the two-party system had the whole, you know, thing rigged too. And he and he's a, and he's a multimillionaire, H. Ross Perot. And they, he's a billionaire. He's a billionaire, and he still couldn't get be part of the debate because he's only one billionaire. You know, you're fighting. Why didn't he make a big stink about this to the media that he was not? He was he was denied access to the to the presidential debates because or the any mainstream debates. Mainstream media probably didn't didn't were interested in the story. That's why. So they. So ever since then, I have never ever seen an independent candidate participate in a political televised debate. And you won't until the system is changed. Since Perot, since Ross Perot. That's what. Well, that's what Jesse Ventura says. He says if I if I can't be at every debate, then there's no sense in me running. Uh -huh. Which I. I got to give him credit. And if he's he right, he's and right. If he can't be on all 50 state ballots, what difference does it make? Well, people have to get to know the candidate. They get they gotta, have to get to know your, your ideas. But how can you do that? Your mind. When the Democrats and the Republicans have everything sewed up. They have the political commercials because they have the money behind them. Uh, and they have the ways to get on the ballot. They automatically go on the ballot. In New York here, we had, uh, when Grandpa was alive. Al Lewis. Al Lewis. And he he ran for governor on the Green Party ticket. And he got 50,000 or so votes. And now that allows the Green Party to be on the ballot every year. Automatically. But see, this is what you have to do. In New Jersey, when I ran for governor. Yeah. Um, you had to have 800 people sign your petition. Well, if the, if the electorate are uh, divided amongst the Democrats and the Republicans, how the hell are you going to get anybody to sign your petition? And lo and behold, 
That's the problem we face. Isn't the Reform Party also on the ballot next to the Green Party? I haven't seen him. Because uh, um, Ross Perot was, was a, a Reform Party. Oh no, that's way back when, come on. Yeah, and uh, Jesse Ventura, when he became governor of Minnesota, was Reform Party. And uh, uh, um, uh, Ralph Nader was Green Party, and, and now yeah. you told me Grandpa Al Lewis was Green Party also. But I believe, I'm not sure of this, but I think Nader, uh, if he was on all 50 ballots, which I doubt, he had to get on every one of them. That is, you know, whatever they needed signatures, he had to do it in every state. Well, the media I was think. the media was all over Ralph Nader's ass when he called Barack Obama and Uncle Tom. <laughs> they know? were all over his ass, even Michael Moore, to get out so that Al Gore could have won. You see? But Al Gore did win. And guess yeah, what? He did, yeah. The old Supreme Court came to G.W. Bush's rescue. Rigged. And gave it to him. Rigged. Okay? That's what we got in this country. And people don't get it. They want to worry about cutting food stamps. Yeah, for veterans, too. Well, look at the veterans, which they're fi uncovering now with the situation, the problems that they've been having for all these years. Uh, Post-traumatic... Uh, screwing the veterans. Oh, yeah, screwing them over every uh, which way. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, this uh, is referring to another letter that was in the newspaper. Right. Although the author is correct about the welcome increase in the percentage of Latin Chicano students at the University of California, the conclusion that the elimination of affirmative action did not have any broader negative effects in higher education is specious, not true. She correctly notes that the end of affirmative action has not dampened interest in the UC the University of California, among underrepresented minorities, but what occurred at UC was not an across-the-board phenomenon. In the year that followed the Supreme Court's decision in Schuett versus Coalition to Defend Affirmative Action, admissions of Latino students to the Bolt Hall Law School at Berkeley, California, dropped 50 percent. For black applicants, their acceptance rate fell by an astounding 80 percent. It is understandable that affirmative action policies make some white people uncomfortable, but their fear is misplaced. That fear is continuously exploited mm -hmm. by right-wing media, both on television and talk radio. We have all heard the anecdotal stories about white students who were seemingly denied admission to universities due to their color. These stories gloss over the fact that overall employment rates for whites have never decreased as a direct result of affirmative action policies. Affirmative action policies consistently result in extraordinary gains for minority applicants. I don't think white people with a, with a high SAT score or a great resume should be denied anything. But that's, that's me. That's my opinion. It ensures that a greater number of members of racial and ethnic minorities will receive the kind of higher education and career opportunities that have traditionally been denied them throughout our nation's troubling racial history. Yeah. Oh, by the way, there's uh, more much more detail on the um, Facebook group Uncensored Hard-Hitting Truth concerning the, the, the exact system they have in, in Denmark. It's, it's actually works quite well. 
No kidding. It's a lot. It's more detail than you know what we discussed before. The Scandinavian countries have it right. I okay. mean, the, the whole they have Sweden, Denmark. Uh, 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 what's the other one? Amsterdam. All of Northern Europe. And Belgium. Pretty these much. These countries have it right. Except, except UK. I, I don't think the UK practices. The I think the UK. The UK is a lapdog for the United States. The United States and the UK uh, teamed up with the LIBOR uh, uh, problems. They rigged, they rigged the 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 the, the, the uh, credit rates in 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 all countries. Yeah. Well, the uh, London is the, uh, the, the used to be the big bank. I hear I hear London, world. England is is where the main office of the Rothschilds is located. Rothschilds, Smothschilds. It's bigger than that. It's bigger than the Bilderbergs. It's bigger than the Illuminati. It's bigger than a Rothschilds. Okay? The problems with the system. Bigger. Well, I mean, the whole plan of, uh, uh, whole sneaky plan of genocide and culling the herd of the planet Earth's surplus population, it seems to be a common desire amongst uh, the, the world's most wealthy. Yeah, but I'm talking about economics. Mm -hmm. Okay? How they have rigged the economic system against the, if you want to call them, developing nations or third world nations, right. et, cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, um, I would like to salute... Uh, I think salute! It, I, I like to salute uh, all the new countries of the world that have uh, said no to Monsanto's GMOs and, and banned them. And uh, the list is growing rather quickly. Good. And uh, uh, another great law was passed in France. I think France joined the list. But, but overall, more countries are saying no to GMOs, and rightfully so. And, uh, and slowly but surely, United States, state by state, is uh, is passing laws that uh, would uh, would uh, force labels to have honest disclosure, honest disclosure in, in ingredients. Mm -hmm. um, and just like Jesse Ventura says, politicians should be forced to. Uh, to show full disclosure of where the campaign funds come from, come from, and where they're going. Like he mm -hmm. mentioned, the uh, congressmen and senators wearing NASCAR racing jackets with all with the companies that that are behind them all over the uh, the jacket. I know he was being funny about it, but full disclosure to the people, so the people know not only what they're putting in their body consuming but what is behind their uh, their uh, candidates that are running for election well as I said before it seems to me that Republican voters don't give a damn no they're they they're, don't give a damn they're lemmings they're they're fools they're uh, they're drones they they're hypnotized by a cult you know, all you have to mention to them is uh, is pro-choice and or gay people, and they and they, and they freak out. Yeah. You know, they they could they could be they could be living in poverty. In, small, I want small, in their state. I want small government so it, it it can't hit back at the Koch brothers, so the Koch brothers can come in and walk all over it. Because because That's they what I they want. believe the bullshit about the Koch brothers caring about a prosperous America, American prosperity. Just like that old statement made by one of the Koch brothers where he was acknowledging what's going on today will ruin the American economy. It already has. But they're well, doing, they're, they're hypocritically, they're doing exactly what they acknowledged. We are in six, the sixth year of a non-recovery. Six years! And what about perpetual 
war. The United States has been at war since 1776. Uh, Perpetual most war. of the time, I would say. Perpetual yeah. war, of course, benefits a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know, who are paid from the Pentagon. Right. But, but not the general economy. No. But of course there's a there is a monetary business interest connected to many American war involvement. There's always a, 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 a of course. corporate interest. Of course. You know, in them and the war profiteering, whether it be with the companies that make weapons. Uh, I, I read stories where there's like so many weapon systems are so useless. There are tanks that, tanks? that have, they have spent trillions, I think, or billions or whatever on these billions. tanks that the military has no use for. They're no just use. sitting there. And what about but, planes that are just see, collecting those dust? Those tanks are huh. made in some congressman or senator's district. Ah. You see? And it provides the jobs uh, and, and money in his pocket. That's what it's so all So what they're doing is, it's profit before not only people and the planet and Earth's creatures, but it's profit um, before the good of America, the good of the country. The good of the country, that's correct, and the purse. Now, the, uh, the tar sand situation, Hello. they... They don't, it's mysterious, like, oh, wait, they, they can't afford to clean up the mess. But they can afford to spend hundreds of millions in lobbying to shut down solar energy in America's southern states. The other day on... They're trying to, they're trying to stop solar energy. The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. How about that? They, in, they were interviewing a woman. Right. Uh, either senator or assembly person from, I believe it was West Virginia, and she she was drinking the water, and it it was filled with chemicals and stuff. Why was she drinking it? Because she didn't believe that it was filled with chemicals what from the like, coal company. Was she a product of incest? Was she stupid? So she she decided that she wanted to clean up the water. So she started making, she was a Republican by the way, regulations. She wanted regulations put on the coal companies so they wouldn't pollute the water. And guess what? what? The coal companies came back with, hey, you're going to lose jobs if you make us do that. That was a and lie. And guess what? That was a lie, yeah. She didn't want those regulations anymore. Yeah, it was bullshit. That's what it's all about. You see? Yeah, they, 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 yeah. They, uh, the Green Movement, they're trying to, by, by corrupt means, they're trying to shut down the whole Green Movement. Alternative energy, uh -huh. solar power. But they don't have money to clean up their mess. Exactly, and I'll tell you something. It would probably cost half or three quarters less if they just cleaned up their mess. Oh, who it, it, the hell? It costs less than lobbying. Who the hell yeah. allows a coal company to pollute their water? Is this you were talking about insanity before? They're selling out their, their. But their, it's insane. Their their state, the the voters in their state and the environment they live in in their state is they're getting killing themselves. They're killing themselves for the sake of money, corrupt co Not corruption. Not for themselves, money. but for the big corporation. Well, you see how insane it all is. Here I thought, you know, when the Democrats put in all those environmental laws and everything, and then I heard about the Green Movement, I thought the, the Earth is, is, is being cleansed, or America is being cleansed. And now, what, I, what I've been hearing, uh, since Republicans uh, have too many senators and took over the House of Representatives, you know, giving the green light to all companies to do what they want, 
It reminds me of the George Orwell book, uh, 1984. 1984, when he talked about the Earth being polluted beyond repair, right? Yeah, they defended. They said, "Well, you know, God in the Bible, He gave us dominion over the Earth." Not, uh, not, not to no, destroy it. Yeah, exactly, because when the angels were here on the Earth first, read Hebrews. The angels were here on the earth. God was, was testing them. They were supposed to take care of the earth. And guess what? What? They didn't. So, God didn't well, put didn't, humans here did, to pollute and destroy the earth also. Didn't God say the natural resources of the earth belong to him? The, the wealth they of the earth? Everything belongs to him. But, the wealth of the earth belongs to all. Yeah, not, not the CEO of Nestle's That's that, that says that we do not have a right to drinking water. That's correct. It's his water. It's his water. He, what is what is his water? Dan, uh, Dannon or Dan Dansky or something? Well, he's playing God. One of those he wants to buy up all the aquifers, yeah. like like T. Boone Pickens tried to do. Yeah. Okay, the other guy who pretended to be into the green movement. The wind movement, yeah. Yeah, wind. Oh, a lot of wind put up coming from... a bunch from, of windmills. There's a lot of wind coming from T. Boone Pickens, and it wasn't yeah. windmills. Yeah, from the backside. Yeah, I just want to say that, you see this? This is a siphon. The system is rigged. There is no trickle-down economics. It's really siphon up to the 1%, to the fat cats economics siphon up mm. got that yep all right editorial page editor alfred p doblin that's for our uh the record here our local newspaper yeah superbly illustrated governor christie's failures as governor to tackle the state's economic issues but what should be kept in mind is that all of governor christie's gimmicks and unbelievably rosy revenue projections would not have been necessary if it wasn't for Christie's failure to generate new jobs for the state, which is largely responsible for shortfalls. Right. No jobs, no taxes, no revenues. Usually, a governor's economic performance determines whether or not he or she is reelected. And Christie's performance has been abysmal since his first day in office. Well, they re-elected him. <laughs> exactly. You know, and, 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 and I have a solution. Just tax Chris Christie's rich friends. Thanks to the ridiculous hype over Superstorm Sandy, New Jersey voters illogically and pathetically ignored economic issues and re-elected a failed governor. Last but not least. He was a failed governor when he when he first got elected for the first four years. The headline was a clever play on words. Although many readers may not know that the Moody Blues are a popular rock band. Popular? They're old! Popular. Popular is, is like top... It's like today. Today, yeah. Yeah. Rock band that originated in the mid-1960s and are still around. Uh, it's still around. But yeah, they're still around. In the nursing home? Popular? Maybe popular play in nursing homes. <laughs> you know, there's this organization, New Jersey-based organization called Blue New Jersey, Blue Jersey, and and they're, and they're, and they're wearing these blue shirts with with uh, the out the shape of the state of New Jersey, <laughs> and and what they're trying to promote is don't allow Chris Christie to bully the bench, bully bully the state senate, I guess, or whatever. Don't allow him to bully Trent. Well, they, he can only bully uh, uh, the bench or, or the state supreme court, I'm sorry, state supreme court. Uh -huh. He can only bully people if people allow him to allow someone to bully them, to be bullied. If you allow yourself to be bullied, then Chris Christie will win and throw his weight around and bully you. You have to stand up to the bully. And, uh, and, and I told the organization, I, uh, I told them that I didn't get a reply yet, but I told them, where were you people when Barbara Bono was uh, 
trying to dethrone Chris Christie. Uh, you people are so upset with Christie. Well, why was he reelected? Well, this the, the letter we just wrote was because of the pop the popular stance on Superstone Sandy. But the money that made the, the, the money only helped boardwalk businesses, I think. You well, know I mean? eighteen months later there are people who still their houses haven't been paid for. Correct. Exactly. The money mysteriously vanished. Now my brother so did a lot of uh, the applications and everything mysteriously vanished. And what about people in uh, who live in coastal New York City? Aren't they waiting for their money also? I have no idea what about the like New Brooklyn York. and um, my brother had an interesting story. My brother lives on the Jersey Shore, near it, on it. You might as well say. Yes, he did get severe damage uh -huh. from from flooding now, not from winds. Did you get paid? My brother got screwed. <gasps> My brother, who just remodeled his uh, one family home and put uh, another floor on top, he, uh, before Hurricane Sandy, they moved into a completely remodeled home. Then Hurricane Sandy came. Storm Sandy. Actually, Tropical Storm. Tropical Storm Sandy. And they're on, um, my brother lives on a saltwater canal which leads to like Barnegat Bay, which leads to the ocean. So what happened was he got flooded out. Mm -hmm. All the new furniture and the entire first floor got damaged beyond repair. I mean, uh, no, not beyond repair, but it needed to be redone completely and they lost a lot of furniture. And uh, what happened was, they told my brother, the insurance company says, we, we will raise your home insurance to like $2,500 a month or a month, unless you, or you can elevate your home up on stilts, stilts or pilings, whatever you want to call it. And then you don't have to pay the high, uh, the home insurance. Well, guess what? It co they told him it would cost $80,000 to, ah. ele to elevate your home. So he says it's like, uh, what is it, catch-22? Between a rock and a hard place? He says, I, I get screwed either way. I can't sell my house uh -huh. because nobody in their right mind would buy about. it. I can't elevate the house because I can't afford the 80000 And you can't afford the $2,500 a month. And the $2,500 a month of home insurance is killing me. So it's like, you know, He's got three options, and all three options are losing options. So what he told me was, he says, on the boardwalk, when they had a fire, and, you know, it seemed like the, the, the boardwalk, uh, was it Seaside Heights? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, the Seaside Heights boardwalk was on, in flames. I mean, the, the businesses were in flames. He says that the, the fire department did not technically put out the fire until it started to get close to the new section. So they, ah. so they they allowed the old buildings so they could rebuild them to to be consumed. Ah. One one establishment it was proved that one establishment was the cause of the fire, but they kind of like had a hands-off policy until the flames consumed the last old building mm -hmm. and they stopped it when you know so the new stuff wasn't hit so you you come to your own conclusions um, so anyway we're ready for your break right mm -hmm. we are ready for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's <coughs> a gastronomic delight known as lunch and I will then join our voiceover artist William H. Morrow the third to discuss a uh, particular important subject huh? to poor people and uh, then followed by commercial promo and then we'll be back with the show very invigorating so far the show very invigorating Okay, I'm here with William H. Morrow. Um, now, 
uh, Bill, Billy, uh, Billy Bones, um, the both of us, we interviewed two low-income people who were, uh, because of the, the brutal uh, economy and, and horrible job market, they were forced, they lost their jobs, and eventually they were forced to collect social services, welfare and food stamps. Now, one of them, as you remember, one of them, because of a glitch in the government website or database, this individual, the government owes this individual actually three months worth of food stamps. He's going on his third month. It will be four after this month. Wow! It's is it is it it's that, so it's over three months. It, we're in the third month for him right now. Okay, okay, unbelievable. And the other gentleman, he um, he was collecting welfare. You know, uh, his welfare with no problem. He He's a good friends of ours. Yeah, he went to he went to the ATM machine when like every month, like clockwork, and uh, this time. The, uh, when he swiped his family's first card, he got a message that his PIN is not working. And then when he called customer service from, from family's first card, they said his social security number is not in his account. There's no social security number. What other number would there be? But the, num but the money is in, is in the account. And the money's why there. Why did it change all of a sudden after all this time? Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. And what about all the other people that are encountering glitches with the government website? Now, these friends of ours. I doubt if these are the only two it's happening to. Let's no, I'm sure there's much money let's more. Let's be fair here. So I think... And, 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 let's be honest. Yeah. How long does it really take to fix a glitch? Supposedly you have some great people, I would assume, working for the government or the county, the state, what have you. Right. I mean, come on, people. Let's be honest here. This is... Yeah. There's no excuse for this. See, once once I see a pattern uh, forming... Well, you know, you learn the routine. I get suspicious. You're like, you can tell your friends, well, here we go again. I could have told you this was going to happen. Right. You know. Uh, I don't get it. I don't get it. I well, anytime there's a pattern, I have automatically red flag goes up, and I get suspicious. And I wouldn't put it past to Republican, uh, conservative Republican Chris Christie for deliberately sabotaging people's social services. Well, you can't. We can't cast blame right now, but it's it's just odd this happens. So many people are suffering because of it. Right. You gotta remember, a lot of these people, a lot of our elderly and others, are living month to month on their welfare or social security checks or whatever. And it's not that and much one, money. No, it's not. And one little glitch, they're screwed. When you've got the elderly, and this should never happen, deciding whether to use that money to pay for their drugs. Medication. Or for yeah. food. Yeah. Well, you can't live without one or the other. No. But you have to make that decision. So the elderly. That's just not right. So the elderly living on a fixed income have a tougher life, a tougher time of it when things happen to their their fixed income. Now what do they do? Now what do they do? Do, do they buy? Do they do they pay for medication? Even if their rent goes up, food, ten or twenty dollars, they're screwed. They can't afford to lay out an extra ten or twenty dollars per a, month. To a senior citizen, that, that that's is, a, that's a gold mine. That's a decent amount that's of, of groceries. When you hear, it, I'm sure you've heard this. Yeah. I know you have, and I've heard it for decades. When you hear about a lot of the elderly and the poor living on cat and dog food, I've heard that. Yes, because it obviously it's a lot cheaper. So what happened I mean, to the really, what happened on, to enjoying on. the golden years of life? Well, what's happened to taking care of our veterans? Right. A little better, better care than we're hearing about. My uncle says the only thing golden about the golden years is they're the urine. Is the urine. Well, they're actually really tarnished. Yeah. Yeah. You don't hear people mentioning the golden years anymore. You hear very few people talking about being able to retire anymore. Unless you retire rich. Of course. Well, yeah, how many How many can be, you know, let's be honest. The vast majority cannot. And, uh, I mean, statistics show, and, and uh, um, Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont said this recently, that I couldn't believe it. There are actually 482 billionaires in the United States, but at the same time, there's 18 million children living in poverty. Yeah, what a discrepancy. That's incredible. That's incredible. What a discrepancy. You know, children go children. Well, let's be fair to it's not just children. No one should be going to bed hungry. Not in this country. No, any country. I mean, a life is a life.
no one should be doing. Yeah, but food, this. food is food is is really agriculture is really abundant in many countries. No, no, we're depleting all our resources. Yeah. Remember, it doesn't last forever. It does run yeah. out. Oil is not forever. But they have food is not forever. But they have trillions, of, and the and, and our environment is not forever if we if we pollute it. Our environment's basically gone. Yeah, it's destroyed. I mean, they have trillions of dollars to to give as handouts to corporations, but they they don't have uh, food. Give them handouts to do what? Destroy the environment yeah. even more? But they hurt but, people even more? But they don't have money to to provide food stamps for the veterans and for for low income people for their and, children. Yeah. And. Uh, what well, they give a lot of people, you really can't live on. Yeah, like the the other gentleman only receives one hundred and forty dollars a month from welfare. That's that's a, it, that's a that's despicable. Thirty five dollars a week. And and if he didn't live with family, thirty five dollars a week. Yeah, how about that? If he, about that? if he didn't live with family, he would probably be living in a, in, in a cardboard box. Unless you could move up, maybe find a plastic. You mean like a, a pl plastic? I shouldn't make a joke over that. So I know. It's really sad. It's, Clothing it's, bin, uh, yeah. It's just not right. Yeah. Yeah, or or he, or he could gorilla glue a bunch of boxes yeah, together and form a condominium, form a, t a townhouse, yeah. But anyway, the, the point is that, uh, I mean, I was reading about the CEO um, of Walmart. And uh, it's incredible. Walmart or Target? No, Walmart. And, and he... Well, the CEO of Target, sorry to interrupt you, but he just got... He resigned or was let go a day or two ago. And they paid him $55 million to get out. The, the golden parachute. $55 million to go. Yeah. Would you say, no, I'm staying to that? I doubt it. Well, well, the CEO of Walmart gets the equivalent of between three and four thousand dollars per hour, per hour in salary. Is he really doing that much work? Meanwhile, his employees are getting minimum wage uh -huh. in Walmart, and they have to go on welfare. And what about benefits? They have to go on welfare. And he can look himself in the mirror. Walmart employees have to go on welfare. What about the gentleman? I'm not sure who it is. I shouldn't name names. But I think it's the former. CEO of Microsoft, I believe it was Steve Ballmer. Or Ballmer. Yeah. I read, I heard in the paper, or read in the paper yesterday. He, he uh, has 33 million shares of Microsoft stock. 33 million. Now, if you have one share, I mean, no, if each share is only worth a dollar, that's 33 million dollars. You know, Microsoft is not one dollar a share. No way. So 33 million shares times whatever a price per share is. Thank God bless him. Good for him. There's so many suffering. But, how, but are they paying their fair share in income taxes? I think I not. Know. I think I not. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, the economy was booming during uh, um, FDR, Truman, and Eisenhower. There was a 94% tax rate on the rich then. And, and there was no outsourcing of jobs and whatever. You know, I remember one time back then we were the number one uh, uh, lender nation. It's a complete 180 now. We're the number one debtor nation in the world. We owe everyone. Especially China. Yeah, sadly they're our banker. That's not good. You know, yeah, uh, so, uh, keep on borrowing from them. And, and, and now the rich are com complaining about a lousy 35-40% uh, tax rate. They were paying 94% back then. I don't then. know the taxes should be. Uh, I don't know. Well, this, it should be it should be fair. The more money you make, the more money you should pay. Or should it be a flat percentage across the board? I just don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm well, really not sure. Well, that. the thing is that the no? middle class and the poor, the middle class uh, was always the backbone of the U.S. economy well, the, when we and the true consumer. We don't have much manufacturing as they should. Yeah. We really don't. We have very little compared to what we used to have. And now it's too expensive to manufacture this nation. Could you imagine how many fantastic products we would have with a re at a reasonable price if if the manufacturing was here and they help small businesses? Well, how come other companies can make, can make it so cheaply? We can't. Is their housing that much more reasonable? I don't know. I don't under, think I'm a, I know their wages aren't nearly what yeah. these countries are. I don't think they. So how can they afford to do this? Well, I don't think other countries like South Korea. I don't think they they hammer and strangle small businesses. I think but they help their small quality businesses. Is, is wonderful. 
Sure is. Not, I mean, from every product line you can think of, appliances, yeah. uh, entertainment, things like TV, stereos, yeah. cars. Well, they're giving Japan uh, a run for their the money. The biggest right? chip maker in the world yeah. is Samsung. Remember when? Uh, remember when these products were did not exist? You remember in the in early South 50s Korea? when Japan first came to this nation? They were a joke. Anything, and they were horrible. Anything said made in Japan, you know, it was junk. And it was horrible. And I think it was their prime minister or whatever said, this is going to stop. We are not going to be cheap. We are going to turn our quality around. That's all it took. A good administration in there to say, stop the crap. We don't need to be cheap. Right. We need to be quality. And the CEO of, of Sony wrote a book. Well, Theo Morita, he was, he was an incredible visionary. Uh, Panasonic, their founder. All those Japanese men. You, uh, uh, electronic giant yeah. founders are were incredible. Right. Now companies like Samsung and Kia and, and Hyundai, they, well, they, they've ask, learned from, from Japan. What's learned? Isn't it common sense? It's common sense. Is it that hard to know you've got to make great quality for the great for a fair price? Is that really hard to you have to learn that? It shouldn't be hard to learn. Come on. Come on. It's it's yeah. use your mind. Now China's in the same situation that Japan used to be in. They're thinking of short-term profit every quarter. Just down thinking, the road, things catch up to you if you if you do bad. Well, now it's biting them on the ass. Yeah, they're they're hurting a lot, quite a bit now. All the lead lead content content and a lot of their products. Uh, don't try to cheat the people. It's short term, you'll get away with. Remember it. Long when, term, you'll remember when pet, find out. Remember when pet food from uh, yeah, pet from food China had to be recalled. It killed melamine. a number of animals. It had melamine in it. it. Killed a number of animals. Yeah. But the pe they said that. Um, <sighs> Agriculture grown in China, most of it is contaminated with toxic metals, heavy metals. Well, that's not good. And people were very upset when I think it was a Chinese corporation bought the world's biggest uh, bacon and ham manufacturer, or uh, Smithfield. I mean, that's an all like an American icon. You know what they got caught doing? They got caught taking dead, diseased chickens. And, and processing yes. them, China, and processing them and putting them on the market, ex mostly for exportation oh, so to, the, to the United States. You can't do this to people. Don't you care about people? Does everything have to come down to the buck? A dollar? You, you know don't how, care who you hurt to make a dollar? You know how bad the air pollution is in Beijing right now? Well, they all have to wear masks and all that. Yeah. So what's happening is people and the planet are taking a back seat to profit. Well, it could be like war. Even in this country, in war, we have acceptable losses. I, I, I don't understand that term, acceptable losses. I mean, well, it's okay a certain amount of deaths. That doesn't make sense to me. But for what purpose? The, the, the United States is, is, our borders are not threatened. Well, why defend your country if you're not around to enjoy it? Well, and then I got to look at the people in this country. It's a little off the mark here. But I look how people within this country treat each other and the attitudes of people. Well, some are very good. There's a lot of idiotic morons around. And I always think this is what our, our military personnel are fighting and dying for. So they can treat each other this way over here. Like absolute rude, crude imbeciles. And I don't like it. Well, America, yeah, Americans have your repu a reputation of being arrogant and rude and selfish. But that's not true. Over the most part, I think the majority are. Wherever you, even New Yorkers are thought to be cold or whatever, they're not. They're wonderful. Well, I, I haven't met any. I mean, you, I, you probably you know, have. When I've been in New York, I've met nothing but wonderful people all the time. Everywhere I've gone, I think it's how you treat people and talk to people. But, well, not not in our area here, but, you know, that's, that's you another rude, story. You've got rude everywhere. You always will. But this is what our, our, our military are dying, fighting yeah. and dying for. To have people mistreat each other? Yeah. Well, the, la the last, uh, well, what Reverend Bill said last Saturday was the only only time our borders were ever threatened is during World War II when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor because Hawaii is naturally a state of the United States. Well, other than that, after the World War II, our freedom is not in danger. So they're, all, they're wars for profit. You they're also have an internal strife with terrorism nowadays, though. Right, but, you know, you but, but know. Homeland Security hasn't been 100%. They haven't been that effective like we think. I'm not sure they really know what they're doing. I mean, well, now they're spying on us. Yeah, I mean, well, you better spy on a lot of other people too. I hope behind the scenes we don't know about it. I hope they're doing something behind the scenes. 
We don't know, but you can't tell the public everything. Let's be honest. I'm sure a lot of what they're doing, we don't know. About. Like, like, was it you that was telling me as soon as a, a, a person goes on a porn site, they immediately go you trigger, on a, You trigger a database. You, you immediately go on, on a sexual, your, your list a sexual is, yeah. predator's list? And not just porn. Certain other types of triggers things, and you go on right away. You mean keyword, based on keywords? Key, well, even the phone, certain yeah. voice recognition. If you say the word bomb, it triggers certain database computers. Yeah. But then again, bomb is a part of language among the youth today. When they think a girl looks hot, or the she's girls the, think a guy looks hot, he's the bomb or she's the bomb. It's like he bombs. And it's gonna, yeah. that, that word bomb is going to trigger something when they're just saying, you know, it's their language of the day. Yeah, it's, it's the language, uh, yeah. So what do you do now? Yeah. But you, did you know that um, that the code used in websites is based on the same technology of, of keywords? In other words, how people find your you on the internet is they type in, like they go to Google, right? Based on certain keywords, that's how they locate things on a computer. Like, let's say you were looking for a certain kind of pet food. Who has the best price? Okay, you type in the, the name of the pet food. Let's say you type in Innova cat food. Okay, everything Innova will come up. Everybody who sells it at different prices. So they're all based on keywords. So um, the um, Homeland Security probably uses the same the bottom line technology. The become over informationalized. It's too much information out there. It's better to go back yeah. to simpler times in the 50s and 60s. Don't get, get our privacy back. Have you seen the mosquito drone, the size of a mosquito? No. Nanotechnology, yeah, there's a camera, has a mic, it flies. It, it, can, it can actually pinch you and take DNA from you. This is getting serious. It can implant a chip in you. This is getting serious. No, this is for real. Yeah, Where would you see this? this? The CIA has it. They showed, they showed pictures of oh, it. Oh, they this to the public. It, things have a habit of leaking out. Well, I wonder what stung me this last night and why I was itching. You know, I if you, I wish, me right now. If I, if I could, uh, once you once you set up your your tablet, I wish I could send you some of the fascinating things that I find on the internet. But uh, that that tablet had some problems, right? Well, the battery wouldn't charge. But you need you need electricity. Yeah, I think I need a battery to make it work. I mean, that's the first basic part of a, of yeah. a computer. You need yeah. electricity. Yes, so it would not charge. You but know I had it plugged in for almost two days. Oh, man. And no, another thing that's near and dear to our heart is uh, animal rights and animal abuse. And uh, I saw something that I had a turn off. No, no, I don't want to hear this, really. I, I won't even tell you. It has to do with a, a sick bastard that enjoys torturing an innocent animal. No, no. It was a cat. It was a no. cat. Yeah. If I caught somebody doing it, I'd kill them. I could kill somebody doing it. Well, the photograph was heartbreaking. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. But, uh, but anyway, that's basically uh. it. So getting back to the two people, uh, once there's a pattern of glitches that happen over and over again with, with, with welfare, with uh, uh, social services, it can't be just an accident. It's, there has to be something more to it than I just accidental. It's an intentional, intentional, quote, accident. Just, I guess. Just, I may be wrong, yeah. but that's my guess. It's just like they turn people down the and first time. This is my, my friend's sec first time. Second time this is happening. Really? The first time was around the same period, about a little over three months. Interesting. So, you know, I'm a little leery. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, You're William welcome. H. Moore. We're running out of time, but until next time, we'll pick up some more, all right? All right. Bye bye, everybody. Take care. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com.
move. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, when I was in Florida, in the Florida Keys, visiting my aunt and uncle a uh, long time ago, many moons ago, uh, you know, they're Republican. My, uh, I was standing there uh, admiring or marveling at the different marine life swimming up to the dock on the Gulf of Mexico side. And uh, I think, I believe it was uh, Long Key. That, yeah, that's where it was. And um, all of a sudden, these pelicans started, uh, the flock of pelicans started landing on the, on the pier. Okay, and she, my aunt says, uh, see those pelicans? They come by every day, more than once per day, looking for handouts. They're looking for handouts. You know, Republicans always have to inject political views into it every aspect of life. They always have to bring up money. Everything is, is about money. And social Darwinism. Yeah, he's looking for handouts. No, they're not looking for handouts. They're 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 animals. They're birds uh, that, that that live on uh, They're forging. Basic instinct. They they're for they're they're looking for food. Animals in the wild have to go search for their food. Yeah, well so are those people on food stamps. They're looking for food. And if you keep giving them food stamps and food, you're going to, you're going to spoil them. You're enabling them? That's great. Yes. Is, that, is that why they made it illegal to feed the homeless? It looks bad for the city. <laughs> you have, uh, what is going on in... Uh, well, it should look bad for society. <laughs> Exactly, for any society if you have homeless people. that has poor amongst it, it should look bad for them. Oh man, I'm trying to remember this other banner that I, I read about from a, from a teabagger, same teabagger. Um, it's um, they're always throwing digs. They're always throwing digs at at almost like they're obsessed with poor people that are on social services. They are, because that person is getting something they ain't getting. Get. Uh, something for nothing. Yeah, hey, now you got hey, it. Yeah, we got damn dollars. Something for nothing. They get yeah. something for nothing. Something for nothing. Something for nothing. Like Christie said when he got elected the first time. I don't want my taxes going for somebody who's lazy and ain't going to get, work. Getting something for nothing. So it's like they, they're obsessed with it. They're obsessed with it. They are. Just like they're also obsessed with immigration. If the person has a, is a person of color, they're obsessed with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If they're if they're white from Europe, they never complain about it. Unless the people of color are working for them for less than minimum wage, and they then they then there's no problem with immigration. Oh, well, yeah, but those people come in with the what? The uh, H-1 visas or whatever, you can get those H1 people visa. in. Yeah, no problem with that, but gosh darn it, don't, don't, don't give amnesty to these 11 million illegals. That's just teaching them to break the law. And you know how Republicans are. They're for the law. Well, they love the law. If if the law makes them, if if breaking the law makes them money, they're 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 all for breaking the law. If if it if it otherwise, it's illegal. It's like if you, uh, you know, Bernard Madoff. What happened was, he's in prison practically for life because he stole from the one percent. If we, if anybody else stole, you know, from anyone else, they would be, I think, like, like if he stole from, from, from the uh, mainstream America and the middle class, no problem. There's no problem with that. They would see The 1% see does that every single day. Yeah, but if you steal from the 1%, just one, one, one percenter. Now, the other day, a low-level jumbaloni working for a bank 
on Wall Street, whatever, admitted to corruption and cheating and et cetera, et cetera, and he's going to jail. One person on Wall Street going to jail. How many protesters were arrested? Quite oh, a bit. No one went to jail on Wall Street. No one. in the big financial uh, breakdown, meltdown, whatever you want to call it. Hey, didn't didn't the uh, Obama administration hire many, like, um, weren't there weren't there many former Goldman Sachs employees that yes. got political jobs? Of course, Larry Summers, uh, uh, J J J Jamie Dimon. Uh, 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 these people, John Corzine, of uh, when he was governor of New Jersey, these people led Mr. Clinton, President Clinton, into destroying the Glass Siegel uh, Siegel Act. Oh. Okay, these people were from Wall yeah. Street. Now let's not forget Obama's got a whole bunch of them on the not, roster right now. Let's not forget the uh, was it the former head of the FDA was a Monsanto. There you go. That's what they do. That's what I'm just saying. Clarence Thomas was is a former attorney for Monsanto. I believe no. I believe his wife is. She's involved. But he, but he in some did big work, corporation. But he did work with Monsanto. I know. Maybe he did. I maybe I don't know. But I know that he. I know that he did not recuse himself in an issue that came before the bench involving his wife. And he, who, who she works for. Oh. It benefited her. I just thought of the other banner that the teabagger posted. It, it said, um, um, it says the reason, it was like a message to ladies, women, the reason why a, ni a nice man, a nice guy is, is so hard to find is because the nice guys are all busy working. Hint, dig. Maybe, who knows? <laughs> but they're working for someone else. Therein lies the problem. They're busy work. So they have the impression that uh, the United States has all these jobs out there waiting to be filled. Well, yeah, that they have. That Where are they? they? Have. The jobs are out there? No, 350,000 PhDs are unemployed. And if they can't get a job. That's correct. Or master's degree, can, MBA people. I mean, what does that say for the the average Joe six pack? Doesn't it's not promising at all. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Well, well, let us sink our teeth back into these readings for this uh, Mother's Day Queen Mother's Day weekend, two thousand and fourteen. Happy Mother's Day to all mothers. Do wind farms affect the weather? So, I mean, for uh, converting wind into electricity? No. Yes. They do. And the more widespread they become, the more these changes will go beyond the immediate area. Somebody who uh, sounds like someone who's anti-green movement. Some effects, such as ground warming and drying for miles around, are already known. But cumulative effects on the weather, especially if wind farming grows significantly, are unpredictable. One point to note is that while wind farms are a source of renewable energy, this doesn't mean they and other forms of renewable energy, for that matter, don't cause change. Even improved engineering of the turbines to reduce the per turbulence cannot eliminate the fact that the machine remove energy from the wind and this will have an impact on the weather and ultimately the climate uh, and I will 
put in an aside here. What about the birds? Those, those, those huge blades spinning around are very hard to be detected by birds. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to be careful. They also blame birds for causing problems uh, near in airports. Oh, yes. If a, if, a, if a duck or a goose or, I don't know, pigeons get sucked into a turbine, they blame the birds. They, birds. they blame animals all the time, not realizing that it is we who invaded their land. Humans, that is. Same thing with bears and raccoons and, and coyotes. Did that happen a long time ago, too? To the red man? They stole the Native American people's land and the indigenous people from all over the world. The European um, colonists, uh, they might as well say real estate thieves huh. and, and change the name from colonists to to colonists, which, they, which means they gave it, gave it to them up the ass. No lubrication. Yeah, they uh, the, the people, the aborigin, Aboriginal people of Australia. They did the same thing to them, and they they um, they cast them into slavery at one point in time. Stole their land. Um, disres disrespected their sacred grounds, and they did the same thing to Native Americans. They did the same thing to Polynesia, Polynesian countries. I mean islands of the South Pacific. And the military, of course, got rid of the indigenous people on Diego Garcia, 2000. Yes. Yeah. They threw into poverty in other areas. Yeah, well... Uh, Not on the islands, but in other places. India. Uh, back in, uh, I think it was sometime, I don't know if it was the um, 19th century or early 20th century, but there was a time when uh, in the in innocent uh, Native Americans were massacred by the United States government. Shot, I think a hundred and, I forgot the number, it was like between 100, 100 and 200. Uh, you know, just regular folk. You know? Like Wounded Knee? What happened at Wounded Knee? I tend to forget. Federal and state Wildlife officials are investigating a tree trimming operation in Oakland, California that witnesses say sent baby birds into a wood chipper. Horrified onlookers. The nest, you mean? Called police as crews ground up black crowned night heron bird chicks that were nesting in trees being trimmed in the downtown area. Herons, no less. They're like cranes. I'm sure they're, they're beautiful birds, you know, long legs, long neck, long beak. But couldn't they see the nest? Of course they could see They just that. didn't feel like uh, properly finding a new home for the nest, calling the Audubon Society, animals, animal uh, rescue groups, whatever. They didn't feel like doing that. So they just decided, ah, we'll screw them, we'll grind them up. It was awful, said Lisa Owens Viani, director of Raptors Are the Solution who was among the first on the scene. It's especially appalling because these birds are so vulnerable and such a valuable part of the ecosystem. Well, they're, they're, they, they, they live around marshland. They're, uh, well, they're not raptors. No, they're not raptors. They're, uh, they're, they're, um, they wade in marshland and they, they hunt for fish. Yeah frogs or whatever you know they but they, they're around water Ribbit. but they don't they don't like 
swim or float, they, they wade because they have long legs. Yeah. Like a flamingo or, or a crane. Crane, yep. Right. That was a that was a um, a good animal rights activist uh, reading, uh, but but I, I, I read and see uh, things every day about animal abuse, both the domesticated animals, pets, and wildlife. It seems that uh, humans are just becoming more like like they are in two Timothy in the Bible, without natural affection. As hundreds cheered, Governor Peter Schumann signed a law on Thursday that puts Vermont on the path to be the first state to require labeling of genetically modified foods. What was I saying before? I salute Vermont who is, in my opinion, probably the most progressive state in the Union, next to, like, I would say, Colorado, Washington, and California. I congratulate Vermont for doing so. So, And Maryland, too, because, <clears throat> and, and one or two other ones, raised the minimum wage. Like six states on their own raised yeah. the minimum wage. Well, Seattle raised it to $15 an hour. Washington was the first, yes. And they're bitch the Republicans are bitching and moaning about $10.10 an hour. Of course they are. They don't want people to... They want you to be very destitute. Desperate is the void. Desperate. Desperate so you become their slave. That's right. Their little fondling toy. Because heaven forbid you should actually go to work and make a an, an, a decent living, an honest, decent, livable salary, like that woman from Denmark said huh? in your banner, and be happy, like the woman said in your banner on Denmark that you put up there. The woman is very happy with Denmark. Yeah. She's a teacher. She makes sixty-two thousand dollars a year in yeah. in Denmark. But I mean, that's big money. Yeah. Baby. Did you notice all the detail on how they explained this, yes. the Denmark system? So that's that's really beneficial for her. Sure, it's absolutely. For her. And Iceland, they sure they don't waste any time taking care of their their crooked banksters and cleaning up their government. But then again, their politicians probably were not on the take. And getting back to Governor Shumlin, is he um, is he a Democrat? Uh, it doesn't say what he is. But whatever he is, he did the right thing. Yeah. But I have a funny feeling he's not Republican. And he promptly then announced an online fundraiser to battle the expected legal challenges from the food industry. Screw them. The, the people demand this. The people are entitled to know what is in the food they consume. But their money will act as a lubricant to get what they want. Boy, they are okay. pushing for, for a war, aren't they? Yes. For a revolt. The Vermont law takes effect in mid-2016. Mm. Why do we gotta wait till then? Why do we have to wait until then? Why? What opponents said... Why? Why? It's... What opponents said... People have to demand they want it right away. They have to hold their elected leaders' feet to the fire. Shortly after the bill signing, that they would file a lawsuit. Oh. The Grocery Manufacturers Association said, government has no compelling interest in warning consumers about GMO foods. No compelling interest, but what about the, the consumers that buy their products that demand to know what is on what is in the food what yeah. about the consumer the customer themselves they that don't want, want you to know well then people uh, yeah uh, uh, yeah what else what could you buy really 
What could you buy if it's all tainted with GMO? Can't I'm, afford organic. Another obstacle to the state law looms in Congress. <clears throat> Excuse me. As Republicans work on a bill that would forbid the states to pass and enforce laws requiring GMO labeling. Of course. So who it, are the Republicans for? Of, Please, people. Of course it's the Republicans that are against GMO, that honest disclosure and food labeling. Who else is going to be against it? And, 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 uh, and the same Republicans are probably the ones that shot down the minimum wage increase, okay. the national minimum wage increase. Critics of GMO foods consider them environmentally suspect and a possible health threat. Well, I got news for you. They have studies now that show that they are a health threat. Of course. Tons of studies. But many in the food industry say the food is safe. Yes, yeah, sure. What could be safe about ingesting a virus? That's what genetically modified foods are. They have viruses in them. How do you think they get their thing, whatever they're putting into the food? What about viruses. all the pharmaceuticals that the FDA uh, that the FDA um, said was safe, and later on they had to uh, recall them or to take them off the market? You know, the I mean, technology boosts food production. They say. They say. Which it doesn't. No, because India has, has had bumper crops with non-GMO agriculture from right. their non-GMO the, farming. And then you see the difference between the organic piece of corn and the uh, 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 GMO corn? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, right. they, they have a surplus of food, India, growing it the old-fashioned way. So, you're, so what the uh, American food industry is doing is lying through their teeth. Just like Big Pharma and all, all of corporate America lies through their teeth. In signing the legislation, Governor Shumlin announced the launch of a website. Food Fight Fund BT oh, It's got a, got a nice catchy name to it, Food Fight Fund. To help the state raise funds toward a court battle with agribusiness or the biotech industries. We are asking people all across America, all across the great state of Vermont, to donate on the website so that we can win the Vermont food fight. The law calls for the labeling of processed GMO foods and for retailers to post signs on displays of unpackaged genetically engineered foods. Restaurants are exempt from the requirements. Why? It should be on their menus. Restaurants... Genetically modern GMO food. Yeah, GMO and, food. And, and not only should uh, restaurants be required also, but restaurants... The, that, the actual minimum wage should apply to restaurants too not giving the waitresses and waiters, what is it, two dollars an $2 hour? Two dollars and ten cents, I think. And, yeah. And then uh, steal their tips Tips yet. One half of their tips or whatever. When you, I, I this is, um, a, I have a strong hunch about something. When, when, a, when a restaurant or a diner insists that their waiters and waitresses pool their tips, I have a feeling that the restaurant owner or the diner owner skims some of that money off the top. I believe. Because when they pool it, I don't think the um, the waitresses and waiters... Who's holding it? Not only that, I don't, I don't think they really know what the total amount of pool tips amounts to. So the, the owner could skim off whatever he wants. If I'm not mistaken. It's corruption. It's total corruption and capitalism. If I'm not Crony mistaken. Crony capitalism. Yeah. Mr. Mario Batali. Yeah, I know. I was. Yeah, I don't know. Was yeah, I know. This. With his hand in the cookie jar. He was caught. His employee. And mind you, we're talking about a Mario Battaglia who is already a celebrity 
chef. Has several restaurants. He has probably had, he has several restaurants. He's on the Food Channel. Everybody knows who Mario Battaglia is. Uh, he He's extremely financially independent, to say the least. And he was stealing, or if you want to put it mildly, taking some of uh, his wine servers gratuities. Uh, he was caught doing that. How much more? Now, come on. These waiters or waitresses and wine servers, they're just struggling to make a living, you know, most likely living week to week. And, and here's a, a famous rich man taking the tip money that they depend on to live on from from a waiter or a waitress or a wine server in this case a wine server it's despicable it's despicable but it's not totally unlike corporate American CEOs the similarity the psychology behind it it also sets a civil penalty of $1,000 per day per product for false certification. The biotechnology industry organization was quick to criticize the new law, saying GMO crops allow farmers to produce more on less land with less pesticides, water, and fuel. Maine and Connecticut have also approved laws requiring labels on GMO food. But their laws don't take effect unless neighboring states follow suit. Well, um, uh, what about um, Colorado and, and Washington State didn't care about neighboring states when they uh, legalized marijuana or, or when Seattle raised their minimum wage to $15 an hour. They didn't Sounds care like about an, what neighboring states thought. Sounds like an excuse to me. That's I think, I think it, it's an excuse to, um, yeah. to delay the progress. Exactly. They're stalling for exactly. time. That's what it is when they, the law goes into effect in 2016. It's the same thing, stalling. So why, why 2016? You know? You know? What, giving two years for the companies to uh, 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 not have to label their GMOs and still sell them? Uh -huh. Listen, listen. Um, Come on. A lawyer, when a person goes to a lawyer, it's just a... Well, what a lawyer does is like... It's kind of similar to what the politicians do but on a much more minute uh, microscopic scale yeah when a lawyer does something for a client don't they do things in a timely fashion most do usually well how come the government which is made up of politicians which most likely all of them are lawyers almost yeah over 50 percent are lawyers why do they stall constantly to give the big businesses the benefit of the doubt. It goes back to the same deal about yeah. corruption. But I just want to salute Vermont. A victory in Vermont. Victory vic in Vermont. Victory in Vermont. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. yeah, good song. Yeah, I just... Well, that's, gonna, that's going in a title. Uh, one of the titles for, the, uh, for this week's show. Victory in Vermont with uh, GMOs. Cool against GMOs. Victory in Vermont against GMOs. It's yeah. a long title, man. Well, uh, I'm, all, should be I'm, short I'm allowed. The but then these morons out there won't understand what the hell the title is about. Tell them to watch the show. Do they understand what David Letterman is about uh, at night before they go to watch the show? No. Huh? But David Letterman is on um, CBS yeah. and um, and certain people tune in and uh, D David Letterman has been doing what he does for over 30 years but it's like every other show though on TV do you know what Longmire is going to do 
when you tune into the show. You that gotta means? let people know if you what the basic the Hey, look, when you go to Aura TV and you want to listen to Jesse Ventura's new show, he's got a title. Mm -hmm. Well, he's got a title. Exactly. Except he don't. Jesse doesn't do a show for a for, for two friggin' yeah. hours like That's we do. Correct. So we have multiple titles. That's so, but now what I'm doing is I'm putting the major topics in the main title and in the description. Other titles. Yes, but then you better start shortening the title. I GMO, I have no! To. I have to. Vermont. That sounds like caveman talk. Exactly. GMO, no? But at least it puts the point out there. No GMO, Vermont? GMO. GMOs, no. The comma, Vermont. You know, like uh, headlines. What about a hyphen? Headlines are short and to the point. GMO, GMOs, no. That sounds like a fucking caveman. GMOs, no, hyphen, Vermont. That's what it is. You're shortening the stuff. You're still giving the information that if the person is interested, he'll read Well, that, no GMOs that, the sounds like better grammar. No GMOs. You're not interested in grammar and time. I don't want to sound like an like a like an idiot. I I, I mean I don't I want to be professional. Like Every Billy Morrow says, professionalism, uh, professionalism, hey, professionalism. The hell with professionalism. Professionalism means you have sold something. That's all it means. I am a professional because I have sold paintings. Period. That's all listen, it means. Listen. It has nothing to do with my uh, uh, schooling. Mastership, whatever. I've sold something. I'm a professional. If somebody, if if somebody um, has a show in a barnyard, and they're dressed up like Junior Samples at, from Yeehaw, Yeehaw, yeah, with with a piece of straw sticking out of his mouth, a straw hat, and a bib overall, you think, you think, the mainstream public are going to take him seriously? Yeehaw ran for you. Pre presentation, image, Everything image, image, image. Everything has a niche. A niche? A niche. A certain uh, 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 Gimmick? niche of people yeah. whom are going to be interested in it. <clears throat> Targeted There are niche. David Letterman people who watch the show at night. There are David. There are people who don't watch There are John Stewart. Who watch Kimmel. There are John Stewart the fans. Idiots. There, there are um, uh, Stephen Colbert fans. There are Arsenio Hall fans. Uh, so on. So there are there are Tonight Show enthusiasts. Which and there the Twain shall meet. Never the Twain shall meet. East is with East is Arsenio East. Hall and Rachel in the morning will not get together. Their yeah. people will not get together. And that's it. But I just want to say thank you because I forgot to say thank oh, you geez. to William H. Morrow III for joining with me for a wonderful discussion about the uh, incompetence in uh, s local governments, particularly uh, state workers for uh, social services, the, de the Department of um, Social Services uh, uh, that I, we believe purposely make life difficult on purpose and deliberately to discourage poor people That's who are right. collecting welfare, food stamps, Medicaid, etc., etc., right. to discourage them, to make them give up and quit. It, 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 they are perp they might be purposely incompetent. It's a way it of way. cutting the budget. With glitches that are... Calling the herd. So if, if, if somebody, if, if, a, if a, a department if you need to reach a particular department and that particular person is out on a two or three hour lunch break and they have no voicemail and you're it's ringing and ringing and you keep on getting disconnected disconnected yeah. disconnected that glitch might not be accidental no because you as a po folk need that particular caseworker to solve a particular problem yeah so we feel that uh, but any communication, they don't care, first of all, any but, communication between those people, it's the same thing as you and your doctor. Yeah. If your doctor gives you 15 minutes, you're goddamn lucky. 
his time is important. That's correct. But your time is not important. So if he, if your doctor gives you a a, a two p.m. appointment, you better get your ass there at you, two p.m. You, yo, he wants you to be there, but don't expect to see the doctor for maybe an hour later, if you're lucky. <laughs> and if you see the doctor, don't expect to be in there more than like ten minutes. That's right, because maybe the more minutes. people he can fit in that hour, the more money but, he makes. But his his time is is worth more. Ours is not. Now, and getting back to social services, welfare caseworkers, you need them. They more or less don't well, need you. They don't really need you, but yeah. then again, that's their job is to have people like you that need them, but they don't really care because they have theirs and you don't, and you need them to, to give you what they ha already have, which is security. And, uh, you know, and, and they make you struggle. You jump through hoops, hoops that are on f probably flaming hoops. Huh. And uh, and there are certain inherent inherent glitches and uh, things that go wrong, mm. either through incompetence or computer system malfunctions, or people that simply don't call you back and return your voicemails in a timely fashion. And they just then there are people who bite your head off. I mean, bite your head off and, and are completely rude and nasty to you because you're a po folk and you are collecting social services. Right. So you have no right to stand up for yourself. No, they could verbally abuse you. If they're in a bad mood, they, they are nasty to you. Uh, you are beholden rude. to them. Because you're beholden to them mm -hmm. and uh, they just make you feel totally embarrassed uh. to be on social services. Yeah. Which is not right, because what they're doing, what our system is doing under capitalism, is it seems like it's making your value as a human being based on uh, monetary worth. Well, what the hell did you call it when they brought, called out the National Guard and the cops and everything against miners? Unions who just wanted better working conditions. Is that not... Is that not uh, uh, va not valuing human beings? No, they're they're they're, they're well. Just you don't even have to Our go. Our country is based on it. You don't even have to go that far back. It's just the simple behavior of uh, people towards homeless. Uh, uh -huh. You know, you're homeless. You're invisible. They proved that. They you're took, invisible. They just had a, 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 a test the other You're day. a nuisance. You're invisible. You're they like took, a, a vermin. You they took rich people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and they put the rich people's relatives out on the street as if they were homeless people. And the rich people just walked by. Didn't give a damn. <laughs> so you, you, you're like vermin. You're, you're, exactly. you're invisible. Exactly. Because you're homeless and you're homeless because you lack funds. You lack money. What was that? What was that movie? Was that Trading Places? Where uh, what you call it? Oh, was that Mel, it was Mel Brooks? I think. Traded places with the the, the, the rich people or whatever, and the rich people traded places with the poor, something like that. Well, I I know I remember. A Mel I know it was one with uh, Eddie Murphy. Right, and there was. But that was with the rich. Uh, what the hell was his name? There was another movie with Mel Brooks where the judge ordered him to. Uh, for a specified amount of time, he did something wrong, broke the law. Judge ordered him to uh, to live in the other person's place. Yeah, like a homeless person, and uh, that was his punishment. And uh, of course, it's, see how the other side lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. And uh, you know, but you know, it's uh, a person can go from being a somebody to being an invisible homeless nobody very quickly it happens economy. in the entertainment industry all too often doesn't it yeah but if the entertainer managed their money properly they usually will have, they don't because they have somebody else doing it they will have several million or more socked away well yeah look at the uh, they end up they don't have nothing look at Nicolas Cage uh, he, he owed the IRS a fortune because uh, he uh, had his financial uh, matters totally controlled by his uh, accountant, I believe. Uh -huh. 
somebody else control yeah. this financial uh, situation. Yeah, so. I am the happily married mother of two teenage boys. Oh, heaven help her. The other day, I overheard my older son, who is 17, talking with a friend about twerking. You mean he wanted to twerk? Well, that sounds gay. I have never heard of it. And now I'm worried. Is twerking a drug term? Yeah. No, it's a, it's, it's called, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, uh, a ritual that is done before you play hide the salami. Is it similar to tripping? My levity bells are coming apart. <laughs> Is it similar to tripping, <laughs> getting high, or catfishing? <laughs> My 17-year-old is supposed to go to Ugh. Princeton next year gonna, on a sports he's scholarship. He's going to take up twerking. No, no sports. And I'm afraid twerking will derail him <laughs> from his charted path. <laughs> this, th these are the words of this mother? Yes. Oh, Thank you for any advice you may have. This is funny. This is Dear Abby, by the way. Oh, God. Answer! Oh. Don't panic. <laughs> Tripping and getting high, as you already know, refer to altered states of consciousness as the result of using drugs. Catfishing is something else. It's pretending to be someone you are not. Creating a false identity on social media. There's a lot of that going oh, on. Oh, I didn't know. I thought she really meant catfishing. Like, uh, I thought I didn't know that it had another meaning to it. I'm, I'm learning something new. Exactly. I know people like that. Phony exactly. balonies, false personas, faca facades, right? A false identity on social media. Yeah. Usually to pursue a deceptive online romance. Why do people have to friggin' lie to try to impress a potential significant other. Why can't people just beat uh, beat himself? I, isn't the other person going to find out about you sooner or later? The truth? Maybe before they do, you can take advantage of them. And pro that's probably what it's all about. Oh, you mean, uh, okay. In other words, uh, point A to point B. The ends justify the uh, means. Machiavelli! Yeah, so, so if they want to just get laid, then they will lie and say what they have to say to, to do it, to get in her pantaloonies. And they won't have to show up in a Maserati. Yeah, but they can't tell people they have a Lamborghini if, if the girl, if they it's show up. It's in the shop. When you, when you go on the first day, no, nah, no, nah, it's in the shop. I, you know? <laughs> Uh, we'll have to take the bus. Don't forget to take a phony. Uh, don't forget to to go to a Maserati, uh, I mean Lamborghini or Ferrari dealer, and uh, have a friend take a quick photo of you standing next to one. There you go. And crop it so. Put it, it on Craigslist. Crop it so it doesn't look like you know, like you're at the dealership. <laughs> <laughs> the twerking uh, that your son was referring to is a dance move. Recently made famous by Miley Cyrus. Dance. In oh. which the dancer, usually a female, it's not dancing, gyrates in a provocative semi squatting position that involves thrusting hip movements. Yeah, a, little, a slightly more than that. She didn't say she, where she mentioned those the, hip movements no. or ass what, rotations What's the matter? Uh, dear Abby is afraid to say uh, ass or butt or gluteus maximus. And she's afraid to say grinding your ass up against someone's crutch. She can't say that? This is what I hate about mainstream media. She, they have to sugarcoat things. Or don't say them at all. Or they don't say them at all. But not with internet streaming. I mean, internet talk radio. No way. For the first time ever, the World Health Organization on Monday 
declared the spread of polio uh -oh. an international public health emergency that could grow in the next few months and unravel the nearly three decade effort to eradicate the crippling disease. The agency described current polio outbreaks across 10 countries in Asia, Africa, Middle East as an extraordinary event that required a coordinated international response. Now I would say that there are other diseases I believe the outbreak in polio is like 100 cases. I believe there are other diseases that have many more cases involved and require attention. Yeah, what about the uh, the, the MERS corona virus that, that came from camels in Saudi Arabia and, <coughs> and is now in the United States because some American was in Saudi Arabia and he brought it back. And there's no cure for it, and there's no vaccine for it. That's more important. I have to wonder Pandemic. why... Pandemics, you know? Yeah. Those columns and others continue to mention Governor Christie <sighs> as the sole source of the state's current economic dilemma. Historically, it was another Christie. Huh? Christie Whitman who started the current slide by borrowing from the state pension fund to balance the budget and I might add to give her 30 percent tax reduction. Oh so she she uh, she took she away stole she stole from the pension fund. She threw the baby out with the bathwater? Well who cares about you know public workers who need pensions. Who cares about them? We gotta care about the top 20 percent. Okay? That's the ones that are the yeah. job creators. Yeah. All right? Well, I know, uh, uh, let me guess, uh, part of Christy Whitman's solution was not taxing the rich. She gave them a 30% deduction. They got the deduction. Reduction. Yes, it always falls they on got the rich the reduction. to get the most. Yeah. yeah. What about Tom Kane? He was... Uh, well, we're not on Kane right yeah, now. We're well, sticking on Christie. I know. Here. True, Whitman is another Republican. Mm -hmm. But let's face it. There have been a few Democratic governors since then, and many, many years of the Democrats controlling the legislature. They let it happen. Let's start to spread the blame around to where it truly belongs. And that's to politicians in general. Republicans and Democrats. Not just here in New Jersey, but even in Washington. They seem to cast their votes not on the basis of what is best for the overall good of the state or country, but on getting reelected. And stuffing more money in their pocket. Two, they are both two wings on the same bird. Whether you have the, uh, the right wing that's colored red or, or and the left wing that's colored blue, they're both two wings of the same bird. You know, two sides of the same coin. I guess um, this will be the last one here. According to the, the uh, according sun, to the old clock on the wall. According to the, the shadow on the sundial. I met Cindy at my workplace about a month ago. Cindy. I am in my forties and she is thirty-six. She has three daughters who live with her. I have met them briefly. Her eldest is eighteen. Her husband left, and she blames herself. She has had two serious relationships in the last 12 years. 
I asked her what she wants in life. She says she is lonely and wants a guy she can marry. Well, uh, you want she, she, she <laughs> a guy she can marry. Well, she was already married before and her husband left. So a marriage certificate is just a piece of paper. You want somebody that is going to stick by you through thick and thin. She wants to be happy forever. But, but the marriage certificate doesn't guarantee happiness. We have slept together twice. Okay. We have lunch together Mondays through Friday. We tell each other we love each other and want to have our worlds together. I have been honest with her that I live with my ex-girlfriend. Uh-oh. She's the roommate? That's strange. It's strange that you could still be you could still be friends with and live with your ex, knowing the fact that if you're an ex, she's gonna be having boyfriends and you're gonna be <laughs> Well it all depends. It can be done. It's yeah, but not not with everybody. My ex and I have been broken up for a while and live as roommates. Yeah. I sent Cindy a text asking if I moved out of my house, could I come live with her and her girls? Right. Which is an honest question. And she responded that it would be awesome. Awesome. The girls, I, the girls like him? I show her that I am not like the other guys she has had in the past. She says she wants to try to have a future with me. I call and text her all the time. But over the weekends she doesn't answer. Uh, getting, getting cold she feet. likes to go out with her friends, alone. So she's, so she's full of shit about... She drives them, or so she says. Uh-huh. Now, I do not know what to do. I am confused, I am hurt, I am frustrated, and I am lonely without her. I know I love her, Ugh. and I want a future with her. Tell her, I tell her I just want love. Honesty, respect, and communication. Can she just not commit, or is she scared? What do I do now? This guy's annoying. This guy. I thought, know. I thought she you was. You hit the goddamn thing I right thought, ahead. I thought she was annoying. He's annoying. Maybe he's smothering her. What do you think Amy Dickinson's answer is going to be? Please, where are you? Love me, love me, love me. Stand down, Romeo. You're coming on very strong and very quickly. You have no business asking someone you have known for a month if you can move in with her and her daughters. Oh, yeah? Only a month? Oh, that's a little pushy. Because you work together, this whole relationship has the potential to damage both of you, professionally as well as personally, unless you slow down. Yeah, what if what if it ends disastrously and and they have to see each other at every work, day at work? If you are seriously interested in communication, you will have to figure out how to translate your intense interest into listening rather than talking. He's having he's having an emotional breakdown because because she's not quickly returning his uh, his voicemail messages, but he's smothering her. He's smothering her, and uh, uh, he's coming off desperate, and uh, you know the, the, he's only known the woman, or she only knows him for one month, and she, and he and he's inviting himself into her house to move in with this woman in her house. You know, it's not so easy. Uh, uh, she has um, daughters there, and it is a question of um, um, room. Do, we, do I have room for this guy's stuff? 
But one month is nothing. It's nothing. It's not enough time to really know somebody. I think you once told me a long time ago that let's say if somebody meets someone online the best strategy is to talk to them on the phone for a while and get to know what's inside their head before you you meet them in person and and take everything in steps I think you told me that, yeah. incrementally instead of going like a bull in a china cabinet and you know meeting right away and yeah like on Craigslist, you know? Oh, forget I about that. Fuck buddy. They're, oh, they're I want a lot. Fuck buddy. Yeah, I but, want a fuck yeah buddy. but people. In Teaneck, 22 years old. People lie profusely on, on old fashioned ads. Well, even even on a profile on, on, online, on, uh, you know, on the internet, people could lie too, for that matter. Well, they, I, run into the, I run into this one ad <coughs> all the time. Um, you gotta join, and it's like a, a, a fuck buddy situation <laughs> where you gotta go out and free profile, fuck, fuck you know a woman that she wants to fuck you and everything. But one of the commitments is you gotta fuck an ugly woman. If they're ugly, you still gotta fuck them. Listen, you don't know <laughs> them. You don't know if their photos are real. They they could be old photos. If they're if they're blurry photos, if they're blurry old looking or far away start worrying that's a red flag and then of course what they say in their profile it's just their word you know it could be lies mm -hmm. uh, if the woman says she she's uh, if her if her body type is listed as curvaceous or yeah, more or, voluptuous or more to love expect uh, 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 oh, who? Honey, honey boo boo's mother <laughs> Um, and always verify online dating people by insisting that you eventually speak to them on webcam, on Skype, because do not go by photos. Exactly. Do not go by photos. Yeah. And I don't, too, too but, fast. But I don't. I don't understand the purpose of lying to begin with because. You, you, the real you is going to be revealed eventually, and then it's going to bite them. It's going to bite them on the ass. But look at that happens with con men all the time. They, you know, they never understand that they're going to get caught. Oh my God! Head. I've heard so many stories of con men <clears throat> online who have who have duped women out of so much money, and these are men that the women do not really know that well. Why on earth? Are these women that stupid? That stupid as to wire strangers large amounts of money? So, well, I, I've seen in my time women who actually go out and marry the guy. Yeah. Um, and what about this big uh, this case uh, several years ago, right. where uh, the uh, women were into BDSM? and they went to meet this guy. He kills them and puts them in those 55-gallon drum dr drums. Yeah, you know, people are desperate sometimes and don't. They don't. They ain't gonna examine these things. They don't do a background check. Yeah. They don't. Uh, well, first of all, it's a huge red flag if somebody asks you for money. Because if, if it's meant to be, if it's a, an online friendship or a potential online romance, money is really not connected with that. I mean, granted. There are women out there that are very rude and pushy and intrusive and they'll just come out with and they'll they'll just interview and interrogate the man like worse than a job interview and ask them try to size them up for income. Okay. Personally, I would never answer questions like that, but there is a there is a pattern where younger women who do not have children tend to size up a guy's income because they want to have kids okay and they do that but they, you got you have to be tactful in the way you know what I mean you don't like uh, they're looking for a potential mate a potential uh, well mate hobby uh, a, a <laughs> hobby that you know they want to start a, f a family I mean it's not like you're an older person and your kids are growing 
and you might be divorced and you, you you're looking for a relationship you know children raising children are not the issue there mm. you know not the criteria you know but uh, it, it shouldn't love in a, a relationship should not be a sales job with a quota that's what I'm trying to get at you know but anyway you know what you only have yourselves to blame and that includes the dumbed down American voter who votes for people that do not have their best interests including the fools out there that uh, that uh, 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 offer their heart lungs liver kidneys to a person that they hardly know you know so thank you for joining us for this week's uh, uncensored hard-hitting truth we'll see you again say so long to these jabronis so long jabronis all yeah, right this has been a megalife 21 production